Today on Judge Faith, this old pickup truck has led to nothing but trouble for the plaintiff, the defendant, and even Judge Faith. Why haven't you paid $300 the remaining balance? Did you not truck? hear me whenever I said that she told me not to worry about okay, it? Okay, let me tell you something. When I ask you a question, that means I don't know the answer to it. And that means I need you to answer the question. And the second thing I'm going to need you to do today is lose the attitude. And later, she rented a house from a family member, but had no idea what she was in for. The hot water tape was leaking, mold in the basement. That is the photo of the kitchen sink. Holes in the wall with wire sticking out of the wall. Yes, sure. Were you aware know. of that, sir? No, I wasn't aware of that. I find that hard to believe. Faith Jenkins. Her distinguished legal career began when she graduated first in her law school class. She quickly became a tough New York City prosecutor and then a preeminent legal analyst on cable news. And now she's the judge in her own courtroom. Her cases are real and her rulings are final. She is Judge Faith. Plaintiff Teresa Schaefer says she sold her old pickup truck to the defendant, but never received full payment. She is suing for the unpaid balance on the truck, plus related fees and mental anguish. Defendant Robert Dunn says the truck's motor blew up soon after he bought it and feels he was taken for a ride. He is countersuing for repairs and his own mental anguish. Remain seated and come to order. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Faith Jenkins presiding. Your Honor, in this case, we have Schaefer versus Dunn. Thank you, Barbara. Teresa Schaefer? Yes, ma'am. You are suing the defendant, Robert Dunn, for $1,375. Correct. 300 of that is a balance owed on a truck you say you sold to him? Correct. And the rest of that amount is for mental anguish and other related expenses? Yes, ma'am. And you are countersuing, sir, for $2,000 for car repairs and mental anguish as well? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. We'll start with you, Ms. Schaefer. Tell me what happened here. In July of 2014, I placed the uh, ad on Craigslist. You placed an ad for the 1996 Ford Ranger on Craigslist. Correct. And the defendant, you saw the ad at some point on Craigslist and responded. Do you have a copy of the ad that he responded to? I have a copy to? of, yeah. May I see it, please? You agreed to sell the truck for 500 Correct. Does he buy the truck for $500? He wants to pay 200 down and make payments, and I tell him that's okay. Really? Because... On a, on a used truck that you're selling to a perfect stranger? And Your Honor, she gave I, I, me the title people, right then and there, too. Yeah, There's a title, was, signed, sealed, and delivered. Right. That he was supposed to hold until he was... I mean, because you're selling, here, you're selling a used truck. I tell people, don't sell used cars, trucks, vehicles to your family members because there's always an issue. You sell it to a stranger <laughs> and you wash your hands you up and you what? get the money, you give them the title, and you're done. I so you decided I, to commit yourself to a process here where you would accept payments I from a perfect stranger he, on a used truck? He... Seemed like it would be okay. What's the agreement as to how he would pay the remainder of the three hundred dollars? He was supposed to come back every week and make a hundred dollar payment. And did you ever see another dime I of didn't money? I did hear from him for a week. When I did contact him, he then tells me that the it threw a rod. I told him, okay, that would take three for it. Then May it would I, be the price you, of junk. Did the two of you enter into a written contract for the truck? We did. May I see it, please? Yes, ma'am. So what's going on here, sir? Why haven't you paid her the remainder $300? Your Honor, I did indeed purchase a truck, and whenever I met with her, I told her, I said, you know, I tell you what, I'm not even going to bargain you down. I will just give you $500 for the vehicle. Right. Um, I said, but I have $200 cash to put down, and I will make weekly payments. She's like, okay, that's great. And she... Which she failed to do. Goes on to inform me of her situation and that she needed work done around the house and Not that true. she doesn't have a Not man true. around to do the work. Not true. Your Tells honor. me about a dispute that she's having with her neighbor and needs a fence built. Um, so I told her, you know, possibly I could help you with that. Um, after a week, I sent her a text because I was working a lot of hours at that time that I couldn't make it over right then. I had worked 12 hours or whatever. I was going to take a take a nap, you know, get some sleep, and I'd get in touch with her in a day or two. Sir, I'm just asking you why you haven't paid her the remainder of the well, $300. Okay, okay, okay. The motor blew up. I contacted her and told her that the motor had blown up. That's not true. But I you, called you. you. Ma'am, ma'am, hold on a second. The motor blew up. The motor blew up. But you bought the truck as is. You understand that, right? Well, I'm not sure I bought it as is. She uh, didn't. Well, no, I have a written contract. You signed this contract, right? I'm not sure. Can I see the contract? Absolutely, you can he see it. He received a copy. That is my signature. Sir, it's not an encyclopedia. It's three sentences. Is this no, what you No, it signed? isn't. It's a paragraph. <laughs> 
is this the document you signed, it sir? It is. Okay, it is so he also hand the, the document name. clearly <laughs> states that you purchased this truck for $500 and that it is an as-is sale. Okay, well, here it is. I, uh, after the engine <laughs> blew up, I caught her and I told her the situation and she went on and on and on about, you know, she feels bad that the engine blew up and don't worry about the, the other payments. I never said that. Don't worry about it. She may possibly have work to be done around her place. I told her, I said, I'm not even worried about you paying me for any so did you do work you around her? Are you saying you did work around her house? No, no. Uh, she told me that she could possibly have some work around her place, and I told her that I wasn't worried about getting paid for whatever work she needed done around the house. I would just help her just because. Okay, so why haven't you? I'm going to go back to my original question. Why haven't you paid three hundred dollars the remaining balance? Did you on the not truck? hear me whenever I said that she told me not to worry about okay, it? Okay, let me tell you something. When I ask you a question, that means I don't know the answer to it, and that means I need you to answer the question. And the second thing I'm going to need you to do today is lose the attitude. Coming up, Judge Faith lays down the law. When you purchase a used car, you are buying it as is. Yes, that sir. means buyer beware. That means you make a decision. You take it or you leave it. But if you take it, it's yours. And later, an old house causes nothing but problems. What repairs needed to be made, sir? She needed to repair the bathroom sink. Okay, and you say what to that? There was no sink in the bathroom. Plaintiff Teresa Schaefer sold her old pickup truck to the defendant and agreed to accept payments, but never received the full amount. Defendant Robert Dunn says the truck is a piece of junk and he doesn't owe her anything. He wants her to reimburse him for repairs. I'm gonna need you to lose the attitude real quick, sir, or things are gonna go downhill for you real fast. Yes, Your Honor. Now, you purchased this truck as is. Yes, that Your means Honor. buyer beware. That means you make a decision, you take it or you leave it. But if you take it, it's yours. So what's happened here is you are now in the possession of the truck. It appears to me that once you take possession of the truck, you feel that you're the one now in the position of power to negotiate. No, I'm not asking at all. you, sir, why you haven't paid $300 for the remaining balance on the truck. I called her on the phone and told her the engine blew up. She says to me, don't worry about the payments. I don't want you to feel like you got stuck with a lemon. Don't worry about paying it off. Then she goes on to say, I may have some work around the house you can do. Do you have any proof of that? No, I do not. She okay. mentioned it in our in our initial meeting, and then she mentioned it okay, again. Okay, so you have no proof of that. On the telephone. She so you have no proof of that, Your right? Honor, this lady has Besides set this testimony? up through the get-go. She's very conniving and, uh... So she set up selling you a $500 truck and only accepting $200 and letting you Well, it's a truck that she prob could have probably only have gotten scrap prices if a fool like me hadn't showed up to the ad. I put a tune-up tune on it because I was gonna have it inspected. She puts in the ad, I hate to sell this truck, but can no longer afford it with the repairs. Right. I've had it for 10 years. Bearings and emissions issues. The seals were blown, but have flushed radiator and changed oil religiously. So she's noting all of these issues with the truck. It's a 1996 truck with $500. It has over 200,000 miles on it. Did you really think there would not be any issues Your with the Honor, truck? I don't think that's the... <laughs> What's your counterclaim about? Well, the... Um, just the, uh, the motor that I had to have installed. Oh, you want her to pay for a new motor for the truck? Well, I mean, you know. <laughs> I had it done, I had it installed. And then the uh, mental anguish of her constantly threatening me to go to court. All right, I've heard enough. In addition to the $300, for the balance of the truck. You are asking for $75 for a printer and cable. What's that about? I had to go out and buy a printer in order to organize all this information to bring this to court because I had to have proof and evidence. So, so, and my computer sold. We had to buy a USB cord. That's what I was dealing you with. Know? I had a USB Stop. cord that had to be. I'm pretty aggravated at the fact that all, this whole nonsense is over $100. I've heard enough. Here's what we're going to do here. On your counterclaim, sir, for the motor for the truck, that you purchased, I'm not ordering her to pay for a new motor for the truck. Yes, ma'am. When you purchased the truck, you actually signed an agreement. I did. Even if you didn't sign an agreement, when you purchase a used car, you are buying it as is. I understand that. You're that right. is what happens when you buy a used car. So my judgment in this case is for $300 for the plaintiff. Your counterclaim is dismissed. I'm also ordering you to pay her court costs. Good luck. <laughs> yeah. 
Plaintiff LaToya Foster rented a home from a family member, but it was in such bad shape she was forced to move. She is suing for past rent money and moving expenses. Defendant Phil Ray says she was supposed to repair the problems in exchange for a deal on the rent and says if the plaintiff was unhappy with the home, she could have moved out at any time. Latoria Forster? Yes. You were suing the defendant Phil Ray for $7,650, the return of rent and related moving costs? That's correct. And, sir, I understand that you are also representing the owner of the property at issue here today? Yes, ma'am. Okay, we'll start with you, Ms. Forrester. What's going on here? To start off with, um, Phil is a friend of the family for over 30 years, and at the time, I needed a home to um, live in. What city are you, are you from? Saginaw. Michigan? Michigan. Okay. That's correct. I went to Mr. Ray, see if he can rent me the home, and he told me yes. Tell me about the house. How did you know about this house? Who does the house belong to? The house belongs to my aunt. She left Phil Ray, um... In charge of taking care of it? Yes. Okay, and you've been renting the home out, Mr. Ray? Yes, ma'am. For how many years? Uh, about eight years, I believe. He agreed to rent me the home for fifty a month in the beginning. With the understanding that you would repair the house. Where were you living at the time? In the uncle's home. With who? My um, children. Did you walk through the house before you decided no. to rent it? You never no. walked through? No. So yes, you just you decided did. to rent it sight unseen? Yes. But you've been in it before because it belongs to your family, right? Exactly. So you knew something about the condition of the house, right? Yes. What was the agreement that you came to in terms of rent and making repairs in the home? He said that um, I could pay him the two fifty for rent as long as I make some repairs in the house. What repairs needed to be made, sir? She needed to do some painting, which which she did in the kitchen. She needed to uh, repair the bathroom sink. Were these mostly cosmetic repairs or were there other issues in the home that she was supposed to fix according to this agreement? Co cosmetic repairs. Okay, that was it, just cosmetic right. repairs. That's okay, right. and you say what to that? There was no sink in the bathroom. Next on Judge Faith. You were going to allow her to live there after the city told you no one could live there? I gave her an option. Sir, <laughs> there is no option. There is no option. Plaintiff LaToya Foster rented a home from a family member, but there was so many problems she couldn't live there and was forced to move out. Defendant Phil Ray says she knew all about those problems and was supposed to fix them herself. Ms. Forrester, may I see your photos? Yes, Your Honor. When did you take these photos? Those photos were taken when I moved in. And what is this a picture you know, of? That is a picture of mold in the basement. This was before you moved in? Yes. That is the photo of the kitchen sink. Next photo? That's the hole in the roof. <laughs> Squirrels, whatever else. Were you aware? Did you make Mr. Ray aware of the issues? He knew. You knew about the hole in the roof, sir? No, ma'am. How could you not know? It looks a huge hole in the roof. Did no, you ever go to the property? A huge hole in the roof. That's a, a tear in the vinyl top over the roof from a storm. Okay. And you, did you make the repairs? Yes, ma'am. I attempted to make them. I paid a guy five thousand and some hundred dollars to repair the roof, and he only did half the roof. And the guy was a personal friend of hers. You paid somebody five thousand dollars, and that's the result yes, of the work. Yes, ma'am. What is this a photo of? That's the kitchen counter. How long did you live in this home? Two years and about four months. And these were photos taken when you moved in? Yes. Yeah, and what was the purpose of you taking these photos when you moved in? Because I knew that this situation was going to come about. And it took you two years to figure that out? And so... No. And no, so it didn't why did you live there, Ms. Forrester? Ms. Forrester, why did you live there for two years? Because I didn't... I didn't know the house was condemned. The house was condemned back in 2010. You found out after two years that the house was condemned? That's correct, How did you Your find Honor. that out? Um, I had the property inspected. I have evidence of that, too, Your Honor. And why did you get the property inspected? What made you do that? Because he wanted to go up on the rent to $500, and I said that I wasn't paying $500 for a house that wasn't, um, you know, livable. And I asked him, when are you going to make the repairs? And he said, in the summertime. I said, I can't live in here up until the summertime. What were the other issues? Was there issue with water, plumbing, heat, electricity? What were the issues, in addition to what I'm seeing in the photos? The hot water tank was leaking. The furnace, I'm not sure what's going on with the furnace, the wiring, because he had somebody off the street put the uh, furnace in. I didn't have nobody put the furnace Who in. Who put the furnace in? I lit the furnace for her twice, I Who believe. installed the furnace? 
the permit was been there when I first took charge. No, of the it house. wasn't. Yes, it no, was. No, it wasn't. So you never had a written lease, right? No. This was all an oral lease. Correct. And originally, you said you were paying two fifty because you're you were going to make the repairs to the home. I mean, yes. the home needed from the photos I'm looking at. It, it's in serious need of repair. You were aware of that, right? Yes, ma'am. Electrical sockets, holes in the wall with wire sticking out of the wall. Yes, sure. Were Honor. you aware of that, sir? No, I wasn't aware of that. I find that hard to believe. I, well, I don't you were going are... in, in and out of the home over the course of the two years she lived there and prior to that, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So I want to understand what happened. So you decided to call the city at some point because you say that the home is in such a state of disrepair, you want to get it inspected. Mm -hmm. What were you planning to do with the results of that inspection? Nothing, really, just to see what was the outcome going to be. And then the city issued a report. Yes. And what did the report state about the home? It's condemned, and it has been condemned since 2010. Okay, may I see the report, please? Sure. And were you aware of that, Mr. Ray? No, ma'am. And it, is it your contention, ma'am, that he had been aware of this? Yes. How do you know that? A letter has been sent to him and to the um, owner, my aunt. So according to the city, the home was inspected and there were a number of violations, sir, including structural violations, plumbing violations, the roof was in complete disrepair, issues with the water, and according to the city, you had been notified prior to when Ms. Forrester had this inspection done. I don't recall that. You understand, I'm looking at photos yes, of, of this home. Mold, issues with the plumbing, electrical wires sticking out of the wall. All that was supposed to be taken care of okay. by the tenant. No. No, this is where you're wrong and you don't understand your duties as a landlord. Okay. You cannot contractually place those responsibilities onto her. Those are your duties as a landlord. There's a housing code that applies and there are minimum regulations you have to meet in order for you to lease property. You understand? Yes, ma'am. You didn't meet the minimum regulations, which is why the city said no one can live in this home until all of these violations are corrected because it's not safe. It's not her responsibility, it's yours. Let's get to your case and what you're suing for. You want every single dollar you paid for two years in rent from the defendant. Is that what you're asking for? Yes, Your Honor. You're also asking for U-Haul rental. What is that for? Um, I had to move. All of a sudden, I can't... The city told me I can't live in a condemned home. And you also had to hire movers, and you're suing for that? Correct. What is the $500 two months rent? What is that for? Um, he sent me a letter in the mail saying that either I can move or pay him $500 a month. Who? Mr. Ray. After the property had been condemned? Yes. You weren't allow her to live there after the city told you no one could live there? I gave her an option. Sir... <laughs> There is no option. There is no option. And now, Judge Faith rules. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Because you were in violation of city codes and you leased this home to the plaintiff in violation of city codes, and I find that I, I believe you knew that you were in violation, but you gave her the option from day one. I cannot order him to pay you two years of rent that you paid to him. But under the law, here's what I can do. I'm ordering you to pay her $1,350. That's three months of rent she had to pay for the new place that she's living in now. In addition, I'm ordering you to pay for her reasonable moving expenses. I find $150 is extremely reasonable. And that's what she's asking you for in terms of moving expenses. So my total judgment in this case is for the plaintiff in the amount of $1,500. Pay her the verdict. <laughs> If you or someone you know has a dispute, don't take the law into your own hands. Let Judge Faith rule on it for you. To submit your case, go to judgefaith.com and tell us your story. See you in court.